Summer of 84 is a 2018 film starring Graham Rochere, Judah Lewis, and Rich Summer, and was directed by Francois Samard, Anouk Wissel, and Johan Carl Wissel. If you didn't notice by the names of the directors, the directors are French Canadian. And they filmed the majority of the movie in Vancouver. Summer of 84 is about a group of teens who suspect that their neighbor might be a serial killer. Cape May Chronicle received a letter from an individual calling themselves the Cape Slayer. There's a serial killer on the loose. What else could possibly be this exciting? Incoming titties. 12 o'clock. The group begins an investigation, which soon turns dangerous. Sorry again that you're uh, grounded. Let me see if I can get you out of this house. No hard feelings. You were wrong. You were wrong about everything. Even serial killers live next door to somebody. Okay, so I cannot talk about this movie without talking spoilers. So what I'll do is I will give a non-spoiler review first, and then afterwards I'll let you know when the spoilers are coming. I'll go, I'll dive deep. So if you have seen this movie, stay tuned for that. Anyway, let's get to the movie. It's like a horror movie and a mystery and a suspense and a thriller mixed with like a coming of age story all wrapped up in a nice little 80s style gift box for you. And then they tick the box and then they just... <laughs> it's like Stranger Things meets The Hardy Boys meets Rear Window meets Disturbia. And they do everything they can to make you think that this is going to be exactly like one of those movies. Until that moment where it takes a dark turn and you realize this is not one of those movies. The acting in this movie is really well done. Judah Hill and Rich Summer are standouts to me. You might recognize Judah Hill. He stars in The Babysitter, which is another horror movie on Netflix. And he plays a completely different character, so it's cool to see him in this movie and show his range. Rich Summers and a bunch of other stuff. He's in Glow and he's also in Mad Men. The chemistry between the group is really, really good. It almost seems effortless on screen, how well they mesh. These characters are not dumb characters. They're actually really well written and they're really smart. You know how I feel about dumb characters in horror movies. Why can't we just get in the running car? Are you crazy? Let's hide behind the chainsaws. Smart. <laughs> yeah, okay. Even the side characters, we know just enough about them to care. A subtle line here, a brief reference there, they didn't overdo it. They did a good job of just sprinkling just a little bit of detail in there, just enough so we can care about these side characters. Nikki, played by Tierra Scobie, is a good example of a good character that could have been mishandled. They walked a fine line. But in the end, they did a good job with how her character was written. The cinematography in this movie was good. It, it's, a, it's just a really nice looking film. The writing in this movie is very, very good. I gotta say hats off to Matt Leslie and Stephen J. Smith, who were the writers for this film. They did a really good job. They really subvert our expectations. They are very, very aware of their audience and they're very aware what we expect with this whole 80s nostalgia. They know we've seen Goonies. They know we've seen Stranger Things. They know we've seen Stand By Me. They know that. So what was misunderstood as just another nostalgia piece, it was really done intentionally. It was very self-aware. It was self-aware of its audience and self-aware of the movie it was trying to be. This movie was actually intentionally trying to get you and lull you into that and think that this is another 80s ripoff. And then when you least expect it, it gets real, real dark real, real quick. And man, when this movie gets dark, it gets dark. Ah, you darkness. It gets dark, dark. Evil motherfucker, black magic, darkness. It was filmed in 2017. It was released in 2018. And I think it just was a victim of bad timing. It got lost in the shuffle with all the 80s nostalgia stuff coming around the same time. I think a lot of critics, and I even think the audience, misunderstood this movie as cashing in on the 80s nostalgia. When it comes to what they were trying to do, it was perfect timing. Because they knew going into this 
exactly what they were trying to do. They had to have known when they were writing this movie and they were making this movie that it was going to be misunderstood. They went into it knowing that this was going to be the case and they did it anyway. Good on them. So overall, is this a good movie? Absolutely. It is a very, very good movie. I have a feeling that this film is going to be a cult classic. It's going to be one of those movies that flies under the radar and then it's going to slowly build a cult following and it's going to outlast some of those movies that came out around the same time. I don't know what took me so long to watch this movie. I thought it was going to be like an 80s ripoff of like a slasher flick, but it's not. It's it, complete, it, it was more like a Stranger Things type of movie. And then I watched it and then it wasn't. It was not at all. Like it, it, You think it is, but it's not. I will say this, if you like Stranger Things and you like Goonies and Stand By Me and all those 80s coming of age type of movies, watch this with caution. If you don't like dark movies, don't watch this movie. If you like movies that can take a dark turn, give this movie a shot. But I'm going to give you a fair warning. If you're looking for a upbeat, fun-loving type of movie, this may not be your cup of tea. So I don't want to get blamed if I recommend it and you're expecting one thing and you don't get it and you get all pissed off at me because I didn't tell you, I'm telling you beforehand. Just a fair warning. If you don't like dark stuff, you might want to... Mm, pump the brakes. So yes, I highly recommend this movie. It's well acted, it's well written, uh, the music and the score is good and, and it's a good looking movie and I think it's really good. Okay, that's my take on Summer of 84. If you have not seen this movie up to this point and you intend on seeing it, I would stop watching this video right about now because we're going to get into the spoilers. Now let's get into the spoilers. My God, what the fucking fuck? <sighs> this fucking movie. They did such a good job of using the 80s nostalgia thing as a complete misdirection. It was used intentionally to completely throw you off. This nostalgia lulled you into this false sense of security, into this safe genre. All these movies, it's safe. The characters that you love are safe and even though when things get really suspenseful and edgy your seat and they're, but they're, they're fun. They're fun. They're usually PG 13 and or PG and they, you know, even when the characters are in danger, you're kind of like, Oh, but you, you know, nothing's going to really going to happen to them. This movie knew that and the writers knew that. And that was their intention going into it for the critics who out there who said that this movie was, another Stranger Things ripoff, they completely missed the boat on what this movie was trying to do. This movie intentionally did that to basically completely throw you off because what you thought you were watching, you weren't watching. And what they did in the third act was completely genius. It's dark and I wasn't expecting it, but my God, when Mackie kills Woody, it's like a complete shock. I can't even put into words what I was thinking when it happened. I just remember going, <laughs> Oh shit, they actually did it. They actually did it. No, no, mm -mm. Mm -mm. no, no, no. They did it. They killed a kid on the on screen. They killed a kid in this movie. No, 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 hell no, no, no. I refuse, no. Because you don't think that these things are gonna happen when you're watching these types of movies. You really don't think that's possible that one of these kids is actually gonna get killed. It doesn't happen. It never happens. They may get hurt, but they never get killed. And not only did he get killed, but it was the way that he got killed. And you're attached to the character because of his story with his mom and, and you felt bad for the kid and, and he was always so scared. And when you see that and they get, they get right up in the jugular, no pun intended, right at that moment when that happens, all that sense of security and, and the safe genre and all that sort of stuff, it goes right out the fucking window. It's almost as if the innocence is gone. The whole feeling of safeness is completely gone. This is real now. This is a real serial killer. And all bets are off. Because when you're watching these movies, even when you're dealing with someone who has killed people, they usually don't kill the kids. This is a serial killer who actually kills kids. And the kids are investigating this 
person who they think is the killer and that's dangerous that's very dangerous and you should feel like those characters are in danger and when you're watching these types of movies there's this safeguard like yeah this is dangerous but it's fun hey it's fun they're going out there they're trying to find out what's going on they're investigating it's the hardy boys it's stranger things they're, they're spying and investigating and looking out the window and trying to figure out all these clues but they're going to be okay in the end nothing really happens wrong wrong if, if this were to happen in real life, yeah, these kids would be in extreme danger, which makes that whole thing with the dad and why he even took his kid over there. Even if there's a small chance that this guy, on the 1% chance that this guy could be the serial killer, you do not take that kid. You don't take your kid over to that person's house. You're just setting your kid up to be killed. Why would you do that? That's so dangerous. That was the one part of this movie that I just could not understand. This false sense of security with this movie and these types of movies, it's like once we get the proof that the bad guys, you know, are the bad guys or whatever, and we figure it out, it's like, it's over. They go to the cops, it's over. Because that's usually what happens in the movies. They go to the cops, the proof's there, they arrest them, it's all done. And I'm not gonna lie to you, when I was watching this movie, and they went to the cops, I really thought it was done. I was like, well, this is pretty much it. That's it, they got them, they got them. And you just don't realize this dude is not caught yet. They have not caught him yet. So until they catch him, this thing is not over. Now that it's over, just give me something to drink. We're so used to these movies just having the safe zone in these movies to where as, as long as the cops are there, it's okay. This guy was a cop, and this guy wasn't caught, and this story is not over. Now that it's over, just give me something to drink. They got me because the cops are across the street at Mackie's house. Woody is sleeping over at Davey's house. The parents are there. I mean, you really think that these kids are safe, that everybody's safe. And then once you see that attic door come down, it, once it starts to move immediately, I'm like, oh my God, because earlier, they did mention about how he helped him move his stuff into the attic. He helped his dad move the stuff in there, so he knew how to get into the attic. Mackie got in there while they were going to the police. And the other two kids who were supposed to be keeping an eye on Mackie, they thought with the proof that they had, they just bounced. The only plot hole I can think of is how was he able to get those two kids in a car and get out of there and drive out of there? with the cops literally across the street? That's the only question I have. This film also did a good job of keeping you guessing the whole time you're watching this because of Rich Summers' performance in this movie. He really did a good job. Like, you're 99.9% .9 sure that it's him. And then something happens that makes you question, like, ah, is it really him? There's really no other characters that they really suggest to you that it could be. There's only, there's a, there's a couple of slight hints like they slightly hint at the dad, it could be a possibility. They slightly hint at Eats brother, but they really don't put their attention and focus. They pretty much give it right to you that this is gonna be the person. But they give you slight hints that just make you question that maybe it could be someone else. Nothing major, just enough to make you think. And it's effective because those little slight hints, they're just subtle enough because you've seen this movie so many times. All those types of mis murder mystery movies where the obvious person and the person that it's just it's almost it's too obvious it's like this isn't there's no way it could be this person there's no way it's too easy this film pretty much just presents to you on a silver platter this is going to be the killer we'll give you hints here and there to make a question it but for the most part this is this is it you're dealing with it it's a good job of writing with the misdirections because they just give you misdirection after misdirection after misdirection. At a certain point, I thought it was Mackie, and then I went back and I didn't think it was Mackie. And then when he came to the house, I was like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe it's not Mackie. He seems like he's really trying to connect with, with Davey. Maybe it's not him on, on the smallest of, maybe, maybe it's not him. And it wasn't until Davey called the number that Mackie gave him and he realized that it was his house number. That's the point where it's like, oh, shit it's it's Mackie but then they do it again later on because when he's at the festival where they're planting flowers and plants and trees and whatnot and whatever 
then you start to question again, maybe it's not Mackie. Again, you're, you're, you're kind of torn because they don't overdo it. They, it, it just very, very subtle. And you're kind of in question. And then when it, when it, when it hits, man, does it hit. When you realize it's him, oh shit. I'll tell you one thing, when that some bitch comes out there and plays Manhunt, they're playing Manhunt all movie. And then he gets them out and makes them play a real version of Manhunt. That prick, man, Jesus. When Mackie kills Woody, and how he kills him and how they shoot that. They shoot it right up there. And they do it intentionally because it is really supposed to be, it's supposed to be a shock. It's supposed to just wake you up. What he says to Davey is one of the scariest things I've seen. After you spent your life looking over your shoulder, after you have wondered every single day, if that is the day that I'm gonna come for you, one day, You'll be right. Man, it, it's it's scarier than it's scarier than any ending. It messes with your mind because now that kid is going to be traumatized for the rest of his life because not only did he get his friend killed, he now has to deal with the fact that this serial killer knows him, knows who he is, knows where he is, and is going to come back and try and kill him one day. And just so, he got in his house so easily and killed his friend so easily. What is he gonna do to defend himself? He can't, his parents couldn't protect him. The cops couldn't protect him. He couldn't protect himself. It's, it, it, it was, whoa. What, what? I, I have no words. A good thing that the actor Rich Summer did with the character Mackie is that he did a good job of really making you think twice about Mackie being a serial killer. He did a perfect characterization of a serial killer. 99.9% .9 of the evidence is pointing in his direction. It's very obvious that it's Mackie. There's subtle hints that it's other people, but it's obvious that it's Mackie. But the way he portrays his character and he, he just makes you think twice. And that's a perfect characterization of a serial killer because that's exactly what they do. To one person, they are a completely charismatic, well-liked person, and people can't believe that they will, will do the things that they do because they have you completely convinced. And Mackie, the character of Mackie, Rich Summer really, really portrayed that really, really well because he doesn't come off as sinister. He doesn't come off as menacing. He comes off as charismatic. He comes off as having an answer for everything. You're almost watching it going, this guy, is it really him? I, or are they just trying to trick us? They really did a good job of portraying a serial killer who manipulates the people around them and manipulates the audience. The writers and the filmmakers did a good job of really not going down the beaten path and playing these sinister, menacing type. In the movies like Disturbia or whatever, when they're sinister and menacing, it's it's hard to look away from the proof. There's something wrong with this guy. He, he, this dude's an asshole. He's definitely killed somebody. With this movie and with this character, they played it in a realistic way to where is that's, if a serial killer, if a person like that is hiding in plain sight, trying to hide who they are, they're not gonna come off as menacing and as sinister. They're gonna come off as a completely different person. They're gonna try and hide who they are. It's only when it gets real dark and you find out that it really is Mackie and you get that payoff at the end, that's when he turns on the sinister side. That's when he turns on the menacing, sinister, evil type of look. And then you really see how could a person do the stuff that they're doing and you see it in his eyes and they get up close and personal with that shot you they just they, they get right up in there when he's looking at Davey and when, when he's when he's killing Woody you see that side that you did not see throughout the entire movie it's a really big payoff and it's a really good payoff as far as the character is concerned because now you're like not only is the evidence there but now you start to see holy shit this is this is the person that's do, he's more than capable of doing this because of how he how he portrayed the character it's a really good job by rich summer a really good job by the directors and the writers okay that's my take on summer of 84. what did everyone think of this movie i, I want to hear what everyone thought of this movie let me know what you think in the comments below because i really enjoyed this movie and i really want to start a discussion because i think it really deserves 
a lot more attention than it's getting. So if you like this video, please, uh, where's that list at? I don't like saying this stuff, so uh, they want you to like it, subscribe, and comment. Like, subscribe, comment, they want you to do. That's apparently how their algorithm works. Apparently. Yeah, so if you like this video and you like movies in general, especially horror movies, subscribe to the channel to get updates on all my upcoming content. Yeah, I can't speak now. See what it did? See what the list did to me? I can't even speak now. So, if you like this video and you like movies in general, especially horror movies, subscribe to the channel to get updates on all my upcoming content, and I will see you in the next one.